One of the projects in this course is the Species Spotlight Project, or SS for short. You'll probably see it referred to as SS in your grades, in the syllabus, and in some of the worksheets related to the project. So let's go ahead and get started. So here I am in our Blackboard course. I'm in the Assignments, Projects, and Extra Credit folder. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the Species Spotlight folder. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And similar to other assignments, the first thing you see is a very brief overview, the instructions, a link to the video, which will be there once I finish this video, as well as an overview of the deadlines. Here's all the assignments. We're going to come back to these in a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and open up the instructions. And let's actually go through the instructions together so I can tell you a little bit more about this project. So we're spotlighting or focusing on a species. And in particular, the last group of organisms we talk about in this class is the phylum chordata, which has a subphylum of vertebrata, or the vertebrates, such as humans. And there's a lot of different classes of vertebrates that you're familiar with, such as reptiles and birds, but maybe some others that you weren't familiar with, such as lampreys or the lobe-finned fishes. And so with this project, you guys will be forming small groups, and each group is going to focus on one class of organisms. And so you might be in the bird group or the mammal group. And then you're going to find a species within your group that's just really cool, just something interesting to share with the class about that organism. So I did mention it's a group project, though what you do as a group is going to be different than some of the things you do individually. So as an overview, as a group, you guys will be researching just the general characteristics about your class, what makes a bird a bird. You'll also be working together to find one peer-reviewed research article about uh, an organism within your class, and then you guys will be preparing and presenting uh, about that organism and that class of organisms. However, there is an individual component of this project, which is each student is going to write an article summary of the article you guys chose as a group. I'll talk about that more in a moment. Again, here are the different deadlines, as well as the assignments associated with that deadline. Uh, don't worry if you're like, oh, this is a lot of stuff. Some of these things are optional. Here's also the breakdown of the points for each of these assignments. So the first thing you guys are doing, you're already in that first step because you're watching this video, is to complete the 5PA or the five point assessment that is related to the introduction of this project. It's pretty cool uh, in the sense that you can take it as many times as you want in order to get a five out of five because really my goal is that you've reviewed this information and you know what to expect since we're not really going to talk about it in class. Also individually is signing up for the vertebrate class that you're interested in. So there's eight different vertebrate classes. You only sign up for one because there's a maximum of 24 students in the class. This means each group is going to have a maximum of three. And the class that you sign up for is completely up to you. Maybe you have a couple other friends and you're like, oh yeah, let's all do the same uh, class together. That's totally fine, as long as you find a class that has three empty names on it. I'm going to show you what this looks like in Blackboard in a moment. You also might be like, you know what, I really don't know what this class Cephalospedomorphy is. I'm going to make sure I'm in that group because I don't know anything about it and this is going to help me study for the test. Or maybe you're like, man, amphibians are so cool. I want to sign up for amphibians. I don't care how you sign up, whether you're signing up for friends, signing up because it's something super interesting or something totally unknown, whatever you want to do. Now it is optional. There's not any points for signing up. It's just I'm giving you the chance to kind of choose what you want to do. But if you forget to do it or honestly just don't care, um, after the deadline passes, I will put you into a group. So don't worry too much if you don't do this. But also if you're like, oh, I really want to be in this group, do this sooner than later. Now, once your groups are assigned, I will send you guys an email of, of everyone in that group just to give you guys a brief introduction to one another. And then what I'll do is I am going to uh, er, send, sorry, I'm going to send you an email with all of the group members attached, just giving you some next steps. You do not have to communicate via MC email if you don't want to. I don't care, uh, but it's just my intro e email just to connect you guys. The first thing you guys will do is find an article that has something interesting about an organism in your class. 
So for example, there's some really weird fish out there and maybe you and your group really want to talk about this really cool fish. Cool. I actually recommend finding a YouTube video of it first. That's going to come in a little bit later. See if you can find a cool video on it. And honestly, if it's something really cool about a fish, there's going to be some peer reviewed information on it. So as a group, you're going to choose a single research article that you guys find interesting that you want to share with the class. You are welcome to email it to me first, just to make sure that it's the right kind of article, but as long as it's peer reviewed, so pretty much any scientific journal, and if it's primary literature, so those researchers were the ones that did the research. This is not a review of all snakes on earth. This is not a review of all the information about that really cool fish. These are the scientists that did that research. Feel free to send it to me, email it to me, show me in class, and I'll let you know um, if it's a good article, but you don't have to do that. So although your group is going to choose one single article, and you're doing that together, each student in your group is going to write their own independent summary of that article. I really, really want to emphasize this because I've had issues in the past where group members share their summaries with each other and we've had issues of cheating even if the student sharing it didn't want that person to cheat off them. Just don't share your work with your peers uh, because cheating happens and it results in everyone getting a zero. So again, each person going to do their own summary. So that's going to be due first. Uh, the next thing you guys will do as a group is creating your presentation. The presentation is not that long uh, at all. It's at most six slides. If you want to do a title slide, that's one of your six slides. You do not need a references slide. This list down here is just talking about the different things that you need in your slides. Each bullet point does not need its own slide, obviously, because there's a lot more than six bullet points. But things like, what class are you talking about? Uh, what organisms are in it? It's evolutionary history. So this is very basic. And essentially, these vertebrate groups kind of arose from one another. They diverged from one another. Well, what did your group diverge from? What did your group first see? What was the emergence of which trait? You can do some research on this. Also on the last page, I have a huge phylogenetic tree of the different classes you guys are talking about. And it gives you a little bit of a hint of kind of what is it that you saw at the rise of your group, but do some additional research on this as well. You want to include things such as how many heart chambers it has, if it's ecto or endothermic, what is its skeletal structure mostly made from, um, any other key characteristics about your group, like what makes a frog a frog type thing. A very brief summary of the article you guys chose, like what was the cool info that you learned from that article? What was the cool thing they did? Uh, you do need a YouTube video, right? So this is where I said you should look up your YouTube video first because your YouTube video needs to be related to your scientific article. I don't want you to be like, oh, scientific article of this and information about this and YouTube video of this. The goal is to kind of let it link all together. So you want a YouTube video that kind of is at least semi-related to your scientific article. If your scientific article is about the rainbow dace fish and then your YouTube video is about flying fish, like those are completely different things. Uh, so they need to be related to one another. Similar to the slides that I give you guys, you should put review questions on each of your slides. And then also you'll get points based on the actual presentation itself. Is it readable? Is there a nice design? Things like that, as well as your presentation style. Now it is a group presentation. So the presentation style part, I am grading individually. So if you're like, oh no, like we're practicing and this person keeps messing up a lot, that's okay. Uh, that part is individually graded. Now you're going to be submitting your presentation file quite a few days before the presentations themselves. I am going to give each group feedback just on information. So for example, some of the groups, it's kind of weird. Um, some websites say they have two heart chambers, others say four. Let's say you chose four, but the way I'm thinking of it, I'm like, actually, I want you guys to be saying two, like that's what we're going to go with. You guys don't know that ahead of time. So what you're going to do is you're going to submit your file. 
This is your official file. This is the one that you guys are going to present from. However, I'm going to give you feedback on the content. So if I'm like, oh, you guys wrote four, um, actually the literature we want to use is the one that says it's two. I'll tell you that because I want you to pass on the, I don't want to say right information because what you had was probably right, but it's kind of crucial to make sure that we are um, kind of using similar sources. And you don't know that, but I do. So I'll give you feedback. Anyway, I'm going to give you this feedback typically within 24 hours, and then your group has the option of resubmitting your file. So maybe you wrote four heart chambers, but now you changed it to two. Uh, you can totally do that. No penalty. You can actually turn in that revised file the morning of your presentation if you'd like. Again, no penalty whatsoever. However, this is not your chance to completely redo your presentation. This is not a chance to change fonts or change backgrounds. This revised file is only for content and not all groups may need that only some groups might need that um, so just letting you know you do get a chance to update your content if i have some feedback for you or if you're like oh they introduced like five different things that is way too much i might tell you that like hey you should get rid of xyz it's totally fine but that's the only thing you can change is content not format on uh, presentation day we're going to go through all of the presentations in evolutionary history order. So our very first one would be cephalospedomorphy and we're going to end with mammals. The information that are in these presentations will be on test three. I'm going to emphasize that will be on test three. This presentation is worth 15 points and is not worth a lot. My goal is not for you to be super detailed. Think about all of the classes of organisms we talked about so far. I don't give you a lot of information about each of them because that's a lot of information for you to learn. Remember, you are teaching your classmates information that's going to be on exam three. So if you introduce 10 new words and use all these Latin words and stuff like that, you're telling your classmates, here are 10 different things you need to know. Anything you put on your slides is testable. So keep that in mind. You have the power to control what's on the test. So the more information you put, you're saying, all right, guys, I know we're doing eight presentations. You need to remember 10 things from mine. Keep this in mind uh, and definitely take a look at my feedback because I kind of try to catch that before that happens. And then finally, it's a group project. I realize that sometimes group projects don't go awesome. Uh, so the last assignment is an individual assignment and that's the peer review. It's only worth five points, but it's your chance to give me some feedback on how your group dynamic worked and you get a grade based on that. Uh, so although only five points out of the um, 35 point assignment, it still is showing me like what's going on, who's contributing and who's not. So one final thing, again, this was the instruction sheet. You're going to have a print version as well as the digital version that's on Blackboard just to show you where everything is. So this was in that first species spotlight intro overview. Then you have your 5PA. This is the quiz that's just going through the information in this video and in the worksheet. Here's where you can sign up for uh, the different vertebrate class. So I'm actually going to go ahead and click this. And so what you see here is here's the different class names. Here's space for you to sign your name and you just click edit wiki content. It's kind of like a Wikipedia page and you're just going to enter in your name uh, in the appropriate blank. Only enter your name. If you're like, oh, but my three other friends want to do it too. That is on them. That is their responsibility to sign up uh, because I don't want there to be an issue of, you know, Joe wants Adam to be in his group and Adam's like, yeah, sure, I'll be in your group. And so Joe's like, oh, I'll write my name and Adam's name. But in reality, Adam didn't want to work with Joe, but didn't have the heart to tell him that. So the only person's name you should be writing is your own. Uh, please do not write anyone else's name. Also, do not delete anyone's name. Uh, you, you technically can. I know you'll do it uh, or I'll know that you have done it. So just don't do it. Um, if you didn't get a chance to sign up for it and it's full, that's it. It's first come, first serve. Here are the assignment drop boxes for your individual article summary, your group presentation file, as well as optional revised file, as well as your peer review. 
For the presentation file, you guys are linked in Blackboard into groups, so you will be able to only have one person submit it, and then you'll actually see everyone, um, well, everyone in your group will see that it's been submitted. So you guys are linked. So only one person has to submit it, and if you're another person in that group, you'll be able to see like, oh, Adam did submit our file. You'll also will have here on the left-hand side, it'll say your group name, it'll say Conjecthes, Feel free to use that if you want. It'll have contact information. It'll have an area where you can kind of send files back and forth. You don't have to use it by any means. It's there just because I've linked you, but I'm not grading it. I'm not checking it. It just exists. And that's pretty much it uh, for the project. So we won't really be devoting any class time to this project for you guys to work together. Uh, there is one lab period where you have a little bit of a chance to. So the biggest thing is just make sure you guys are communicating before and after class, maybe in that time between class and lab, uh, as well as just outside of class. So let me know if you guys have any questions and good luck.